Ole Anderson shoots hard on Ric Flair, as you see here, during the very early years of the Four Horsemen, the original Four Horsemen, with Ole Anderson, Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, and Arn Anderson, and of course the manager, J.J. Dillon. And here you see them reunited in later years, and Ole doesn't look too happy to be there. And nonetheless, it comes down to with the shoot interview, Ole Anderson really buries Ric Flair. Not only as a professional wrestler, but as a human being as well. There's no secret, a lot of people in the professional wrestling industry don't have a lot of good things to say about Ric Flair, even though, in my eyes, he's one of the greatest of all time. Do I get along with Flair? No. If the bachelor would die right now, I'd be set, I'd be pissed, but only because he died right now. I want him to die slow. Why is that? I hate the bastard. i got to be careful when I'm doing this on the TV, so I'll back No, it's up. okay. You can talk at the shoot, so you get... Yeah, well, I don't want anything else to happen. He lies about everything he does. He's owed me money for years. He had always owed me money. I used to give him money all the damn time. He used to damn, he could spend, he's the only guy that could have a dollar and spend 200. Hmm. He uh, thinks he's the greatest worker in the world, but he wasn't. And I think I already told you, when I went to book up in the Carolinas, I got rid of him. I made him champion. Why? I didn't want him. And the same match that he has every night as a champion now would be covered because he'd be in San Francisco one night, the next night he'd be in Texas, the next night he'd be in Iowa, the next night he'd be in Miami. So he could have the same match every night and it wouldn't make a difference because nobody would give a shit, nobody would know. Right. But when you got a little place like this where you're, in, where you're in Marietta every night, every Saturday, I should say, or every Sunday, you're in Atlanta every Friday or every whatever day it is, you're in Columbus every Wednesday, you're in May. Those damn towns can't stand the same guy day after day after day after day. New York can get away with it. Charlotte can get away with it a little bit, but not Georgia. What's going to happen tomorrow if you actually run into them? <laughs> what now? What, what happens tomorrow if you guys actually run into each other, just turn the other? I don't think we will, but if we do, uh, I'll do like the last time I saw him. I didn't talk to him. Was that in Jersey at the autograph session like years what ago? Now? Was that like maybe 10 years ago at the autograph session? In Jersey? You guys? Yes. Okay. okay. You remember that? Yeah, I was there. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah he came chasing after me. Huh. He was a piece of shit then. He's a piece of shit now. He's always been a piece of shit. I shouldn't say always, because at one time I liked him. He and my <coughs> wife's brother were friends. Then he broke into the business. This is after me. What, 72 or 73, whatever it was, I don't remember. Right. Down for Vern? Yeah. Brad Reagan. And see, at one time, Vern only broke in one guy a year. He broke in Gene one year. He broke in Dale Lewis one year. He broke Ole Anderson one year. But when Rick was there, he decided to get five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten guys. I think she Because he wanted to make some money. Right. Yeah, Sheik, Rick, uh, uh, hell of a good athlete that was up in Minnesota. I forgot his name. Brad Reagan? Who? Brad Reagan? I don't know if Brad was in at that deal or not, but good athlete, yes, good wrestler. Bob, 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 he was in a plane crash with uh, Ric Flair and, and Johnny Valentine. I should know this. I'll think of it. Okay, but anyway, so Vern broke in a bunch of guys. And uh, what the hell was the question? We were talking about Rick. Okay. He broke in a bunch of guys, Rick was one of them. And uh, Rick came down to... Uh, the Carolinas, and we took him as our cousin, Sheen and I. And we did everything we could to teach him because a, the guy didn't know nothing. Well, of course not. Nobody knows anything. Uh, so we put him in the ring when it was advantageous for, to him to be in the ring. And we started screwing up after a half a minute or a minute. We'd say, tag out. And we'd go back in and cover it up or whatever it might be. I liked him. He had the one thing was true. He did have a certain amount of flair. He did have something. And that who was brand new. And the people liked it. And like I told you before, if the people like something, I don't give a damn. The guy could be the worst asshole in the world. But if they liked it, good enough for me. Right. So it went like that. And then we finally left the uh, Carolinas. 76, we came down here. 
And I sent uh, Steamboat, Ricky Steamboat, up to the Carolinas. And George saw him, liked him. Rick apparently saw him, liked him. Uh, they were short of heels. We were gone, and John Valentine was all screwed up. Um, so they needed to make some more heels. And Rick was the, the guy. Uh, and everybody apparently liked what Rick was doing. But when I had Rick a couple of times, or when I'd see him, I said, my God, that's, uh, I, I, I just, I thought the matches were horrible. And I thought he was horrible. And uh, we were still okay. And then Crockett asked me to book up there in the Carolinas in 81, I guess it was. And Rick was there. And so the first thing I wanted to do was get Rick out. And I thought he'd make a good world champion because, like I said, world champion doesn't wrestle in the same town every night or every week. He wrestles in a different town a thousand miles away or hundreds of miles away. So the same match will work for the world champion. Right. He dresses well. He does a good enough interview. He carries himself well. So I said, that'd be fine. So I helped make him world champion, called up Betty Graham and all of it. Have I already said this before? No, no. This is all new stuff. Okay. Well, anyway, so Betty Graham... I can't remember who the hell was. I think the the champion was Jack Briscoe. Might have, yeah, okay. Well, then they, they changed it to Dusty, I think it was, because that didn't he take the, the, mm -hmm. the belt from Dusty? In 81, I think. Yeah, but yeah. they just, yeah, exactly. But they just gave it to Dusty so he could take it away from somebody besides Jack, I think. So Rick became the champion. And he sent me a pair of cowboy boots and sent me a nice letter. He was so happy. I wasn't pissed at him yet. I just didn't want to have to book him because I didn't want to put up, that, put up with that same damn match all the time. Well, as time went on, I got to thinking that he believed what he was seeing that he really was. And in 1983, surely by 1984, the NWA, forget about it. It was gone. Vince McMahon had taken over. It was the end of everything. Right. But Ric Flair was still champion. But champion of what? Representing who? Representing what? He doesn't understand that. He thinks he's the greatest wrestler in the whole damn world. I have no doubt about it. He thinks he's better than anybody. Okay, well, we may all think that. But to me, he's a drizzling shits. But what I really didn't like, and i, I got to be careful. I'll just quit talking like this because I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, he just did things that I know about. I'll give you one example. Some kid at TV said... Uh, this week, Green Bay is playing the Vikings. Who do you like? Rick was from Minnesota. Well, he said, I'll take the Minnesota Vikings. Kid says, okay, I'll take Green Bay. What do you want to bet? Uh, Rick says, well, what do you want to bet? And kid says, well, you know, 25 bucks. Rick says, 25 bucks? What the hell is that? Make it 100. Kid don't have 100. Kid's doing TV. He's making 25 damn dollars making a TV. And I, I listen. I happened to hear it. I was going by, it and I, and I told the kid. He says, "Well, okay, hundred bucks. Hundred bucks." Next week, Minnesota gets beat. Oh, he also gave the kid. The kid's taking Green Bay. Green Bay, like at fourteen points, Minnesota's going to win. Minnesota got beat by Green Bay. All right. So the kid says, "Oh, well, I guess I won, didn't I?" Rick says, "What are you talking about?" Well, I bet you on that Minnesota Green Bay game, I said, uh, you gave me 14 points and you're going to take Minnesota. But Green Bay beat him, so you owe me 100 bucks. Rick said, get the hell out of here. What are you talking about? I never made a bet with you. <laughs> and there again, I was in the damn room. And I said, listen, I was here when you made the bet last week. I said, just pay him the 100 bucks and shut the hell up. All right, all right. Hmm. That was Ric Flair. And he did a lot of shit. He owes me money. <laughs>